Baseball 4 is Jim Pickett's been in the courtroom. Joins us live now from the federal courthouse. Jim, the latest question involved a donor to Koreans' causes. And it's an important question because it really shows how the jury is looking and delving into this. It involved one of the biggest donors to the, to the Kareem Brown there, the $76,000 from Bright House Communication. And Marva Johnson, who was on the stand talking about that during the testimony. It's very important because it's really showing that the jury is looking into this. Their question, though, there was so much testimony, they wanted a transcript. They wanted to be able to go back and look at this. The judge is basically taking that under under advisement because he says normally the uh, the court does not provide transcripts but he agrees that there was so much testimony in this case that maybe they should so he's thinking about doing that that would be over the objections of the prosecution who are kind of saying well you normally don't do it you shouldn't but of course Kareem Brown's attorneys thinks that this is a good idea I want to bring Lindsay Gardner in on this and she is talking to our legal and uh, team about this Lindsay what are they saying is this important it's absolutely important I just got the phone with attorney Gene Nick and he tells me this is a very sticky situation for Judge Corrigan. Judge Corrigan, known to be a very fair judge, as Jim just mentioned, the judge let both parties know he will take this under advisement. He went ahead and ordered to have this transcript made in case he does release it to them. But this is why it's sticky. Uh, Attorney Jean Nichols was explaining to me that they don't typically release these transcripts. So you, if you if you decide to release Marva Johnson's full transcript, are you putting her testimony ahead of other testimony in the trial? Are you giving it more weight possibly than Ronnie Simmons, Carla Wiley, when all testimony is supposed to be weighed the same? So Nichols also explained to me what is most likely to happen here if the judge does not issue a blanket no would be to ask the jury, do you have a specific question about Johnson's testimony? We could read you the question and read you Johnson's response to your specific question. He says that is more likely to happen than releasing the whole transcript. Another part uh, to add to this layer here is if you give them Marva Johnson's transcript, do you then give them Ronnie Simmons' transcript if they ask for that? Corrine Brown's transcript. And then you're talking about really prolonging this trial and possibly setting up um, a bad precedence if they then come back and they want more and more and more. And I know that's what the prosecution was worried about, that that was going to happen as well. But as you mentioned too, there's all types of testimony. There's tons of testimony they're going through. It's hard to remember. All and, that. and you know, another key point as to why the prosecution doesn't want this testimony to come in is because this was a key point in Kareem Brown's defense attorney's closing argument. James Smith told this jury, look at the email between Ronnie Simmons and Marva Johnson. In it, it is Ronnie Simmons writing to Marva Johnson correct, uh, directly, to Kareem Brown completely left out of it, saying, quote, I'm in a jam. When is the money coming through? When is the check coming through? And Smith said, hey, this is really where Simmons kind of messed up and, and actually put it in writing. He personally was in a jam. He was handling this money, not Kareen Brown. And if he was doing it in this one instance, is it likely he was doing it in others? And Marva Johnson's uh, donation, the $76,000, was really tied to a lot of the banner events here in this trial, the, the golf tournament, the Congressional Black Caucus events, uh, the China trip. So you're talking about possibly money that was tied to a lot lot of charges Brown is facing in the indictment. Very good. Thank you, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. appreciate that. The other happenings today, too. Of course, Kareem Brown arrived here on time. She got here early. But the question came up about one of the jurors being approached by another news, or news organization, Channel 12, a, a sitting juror. They thought they were talking to the dismissed juror or were trying to talk to the dismissed juror. That didn't happen, but the judge had to hear about that today. Again, Channel 12, their general manager and their attorney, they were in court today to apologize to the judge about what happened. Here's what he told us. At no time did anyone from First Coast News have any contact with the juror. And to the best of our knowledge, the juror never attempted to contact First Coast News. Um, all of us at First Coast News deeply regret this. And I want to sincerely reach out and apologize to the judge, to Judge Corrigan and the two parties. Again, that juror was never contacted, but the judge just put out that warning again, and he's going to let everyone know, don't talk to, don't contact the jurors. We're standing by to see what happens today. If there'll be a verdict, more questions, we're right here at the federal courthouse. For now, we're live downtown. Jim Pickett, Channel 4, The Local Station.